again, I'll read through them and try to answer them the best that I can. Um, so today's version, today's webinar is going to be all of, about the new planning project that we have here in Workamajig. And just to give you a little background on the planning project, this really all started when we had kind of a, um, I guess a talking, a talking group to go through. We were just we were discussing retainers of all things, and people were saying that we were just getting a lot more feedback from people with retainers, saying that they don't really do retainers by dollars. Retainers they they base their retainers on number of hours. So we took that information right and somehow in some way we you know started plotting a retainer that did based on hours and we ended up all the way circling back around to the planning project because not only were we looking at this in a billing standpoint but we were looking at this for resource management and project management um, and so here we ended up with the planning project so in your work majig everybody should have um, under the project manager area we have our project area and then we have planning project, right? So if I click here, I kind of will get that planning project um, dashboard. I don't have anything just yet. That's the whole point of today's webinar. We're gonna build one together. Um, but you would be able to, again, see a list of all of your planning projects here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is a planning project is a project, right? So you are also able to go into your project area here and, you know, which would list out your regular everyday projects, what are not planning projects, but you can also um, customize this view to also include planning projects. So if you wanted to incorporate your planning projects into a list of your regular projects, you can absolutely um, do that also. Um, and, but for creating and managing, in, you know, the individual planning projects, you know, you would do that from here and to create a new one, you're, you're going to click here, right? Click a plus sign to create a new planning project. Now, what you're going to see here is going to look a little bit like a regular project. So there are a few differences on this. First, of course, we do when we're creating a planning project, we're going to um, pick our clients and have our primary contact, and then we will, um, you know give it our name and i can i really seriously can type i promise sometimes um so we can put in our name of our planning project now you'll notice i don't have a project to copy or a template to copy here the planning project the only thing that you can do with a planning project is manually create it which we're going to do today or if you've had you have one in the system you can copy from it so if this is something that you're going to be doing like quarterly or yearly you can copy from a previous version of that planning project and they would appear here in the drop down you can type in your description here and the other difference that we're going to see here from a regular project is we do have a start date but we also require a due date right so you do need to put in your due date here. Now this planning project, again, the idea of the planning project, it allows you to plan out long-term client commitments, right? So they could be quarterly, again, it could be for a year, um, you know, it really depending on how you would use this, but we do require that you would put in, again, a, a start date and a due date for this. And this is going to, again, feed into your resource management, your assignment management, um, and then go all the way through, you know, estimating, billing, and accounting if necessary. So I'm just going to go, through, mine's going to go through the end of March right there. And then when I click save, you'll notice that this screen's going to be a little bit different from a regular project too. I still have all my basics down here, right? I still can add miscellaneous costs and upload files and, you know, and view transactions and things, but the big difference is going to be here in my schedule. I don't have tasks on a planning project. I have assignments, right? And so what I can do with my assignments here is I can add my assignment and you'll notice I, I have, I'm gonna show you the different options for getting this information in here, but you'll notice again, I have these weekly buckets that go through through the end of my, um, you know, my my plan date, my project end date there. So I, you know, first thing I could do is I could say, well, um, I just need to I resource and allocate out like a service, right? I mean, I, I told this client that they would, you know, we would give them so much time of, um, you know, I don't know, let's pick one. We'll just say like web content development, right? So I just, I put that in there. Now I have, multiple ways of filling this information out. I can do percentage assigned, 
which is going to be based off of a 40 hour week. I can just do a total number of hours or I can fill out this information individually. I'm going to show you all three and again, the different ways that we can fill this information out. But percentage assigned, I can say, well, you know, I'm going to do, let's say, 20 percent. When I click out and you'll see that it will go through, it'll it'll calculate the total number of hours for me and it will go through and it will put the information in on a weekly basis. Now you'll notice this number is a little bit different than the other weeks. And again, that's because we're halfway through that week, right? So it does take that number um, you know, into account the number of days within that week for the time period that we're doing. So what I've done now here is I've, you know, I've just allocated time for web content development. Really, that's going to show up on my staff schedule screen for my resourcing so that I would see that I have made a commitment um, to provide web content development for, you know, uh, eight hours a week for the next few months, right? I haven't really committed a person to it just yet, which we're going to get to that in, in just a few minutes, but I have committed that service um, there. I can also, again, like I can come down here and maybe I just know I have, a, you know, I'm also committing maybe a person and a service, right? So I also said that I'm going to give them some account management time, um, my, you know, somebody, Sam is my account manager. And so they're, they're going to be the ones responsible for that account management time. And I can go through and I can say, well, and we're just going to do, I don't know, we'll just say 150 hours in that time period. And it will go through and do that calculation for me, right, based on those numbers. And then last but not least is I could say, well, I do know that I have, um, another person who's going to be doing some um, public relations work, but we, you know, we don't do public relations work every week of every month of every, you know, of every year, you know, we're going to do, um, you know, five hours, you know, um, every few weeks or something like that, right? So I can just put in that time and it would and then allocate that time. Um, right there. So again, I can manually fill out those buckets. And then of course, it just kind of back calculates that information for me right here. All right. So this is again, how we're building again, these assignments and allocations. I am, I promise going to show you how this information, you know, um, broadcast throughout Workamajig, how you're going to use this information and things like that. But do you have any questions currently on how I filled the information out here on the schedule screen? And you can ask those questions in the chat. I'm going to pause for a second to see if anyone has any questions. All right, I don't, I'm not seeing any questions coming in. So hopefully I'm not missing anything. My, <laughs> my chat was working before. So again, if you have any questions, uh, you can type them in the chat and I will come back to them, I promise. And we can revisit any screens if I missed anything. So this is again, how I'm, you know, again, allocating out this information, you know, at this time. Now, once I'm in here, and once I have this information out, you know, we again, like I told you, this kind of all started um, you know, when we were, we, we started this all as a retainer, right? So when we started this as a retainer, you, you know, now we want to talk maybe a little bit about the financial portion of this, just so you know, I can click under more and I can create an estimate based on the information that I've put in here, right? So when I click on create estimate, this, it takes up my, again, my typical estimate screen. Um, the difference is I only am able to do a task and service estimate. And when I click on save, you'll see that it automatically just brings in my labor total, right? So I, if I click into here, by the way, there's just an underlying task called labor and expense, but I had 272.2 hours at a total of $34,025. So of course, it just brings that information over based again on what I've you know, allocated into my schedule. Can I make changes? Of course I can make changes. It's work imaging. We can make changes to that um, if we needed to do that right there. Um, and of course, I can estimate expenses on my planning project, right? It's not really part of the resource management planning, but you, of course, if you wanted to use this as a project for time entry and, you know, and, and tracking time and expenses, you absolutely can do that. So you can estimate your expenses and you can approve this estimate, right? So again, kind of the same functional estimating functionality that we have in a, I'll, you know, saying quotes, regular project. Um, the only difference is, is the estimate type is locked down. Right, so I have my estimate and I have it approved. And I'm going to pause right there for a second. I think I might have a question in my chat. 
Um, so somebody asked, and I, maybe you guys can all see this too, but I'll just, you know, so you don't all have to read it. It says in the web content, I put in a percentage assigned and December 27th is 4.8 hours because it automates that. Can you change that number? It automates. I mean, you can go in and manually change that number, right? Like all of these buckets can be manually updated. Um, but if you were to use percentage assigned or total hours, it does the math for you and says, oh, that's a um, midweek or something. And then it will it will recalculate those hours to, you know, accommodate the, the middle of the week, right? It will also do that at the end. If your last day of the month, you'll notice again, mine's a little bit different different because if the last day of the month that I chose for my project end date was a midweek day, right? So it just recalculates those allocations. Can you change that? Absolutely. When I change something in the middle, right, it will just go through and change these numbers up here, right? These are just, again, the math is going back and forth. So hopefully that answered your the, that question for you. Um, now, a couple of things that... Um, you know, again, about the screen is now, you know, once I've gone in there, just so you know, you can go in, view and edit your estimate, right? If you needed to go in and make modifications, that's what's under the more right here. You also, of course, if I make modifications to my schedule screen, which we're going to talk about just in a little bit too, I can create a change order estimate if I needed to do that. And then my display options, not a whole lot going on there, just allows you, do you want to do an automatically save of your schedule or do you want to have to click the save, right? So that's just an option on the schedule screen there. So that's my schedule estimate area. My project settings area here, um, again, a, li a little bit more limited than a, a different, you know, the regular project right there. But you can, again, assign it a project type. This is my project number, my account manager, you know, if I'm using a, a, an account team, my scheduling, right? So you can make modifications to your schedule. Now, I think this might be new and I can't really, you know, demonstrate it because we're not going to roll over, but this might be new since the last webinar I did on planning project. But we do now have a feature that allows you to automatically roll over unused hours. So I can't, again, I can't really demonstrate that because of course we would have to all sit here for a week and wait for that to happen. But really what that means is if I've allocated, you know, the five hours on a week and we only use up as in putting in time entry, you know, our actual using of that three hours, right? Then what, what happens to those two hours? With this unchecked, right, those remaining two hours just kind of fall off. They don't get used. That allocation, we move on to the next week and those, those two hours just, you know, aren't used. If you do check this box, those two hours will roll over to the next week. So if that next week was also five hours, it would now be seven hours. Right. So this is an option that you can pick on your on your planning project, pro, you know, project by project. Do you want those unused allocated hours to roll week to week? Right. So, again, if you made that promise of five hours a week for, you know, six months um, and you don't use it, do you want them to be used in a later week? Or do you say, well, if we didn't use them, we don't have to use them. Right. So that's, again, that automatic right there. Under the accounting tab, you certainly can set up these planning projects to be a non billable project. If you needed to, um, you know, so you can set that there. And we, of course, have the accounting close option at the end of that. Now, billing method is going to be a little bit different for our planning project, right? So here in our planning project, the planning project itself can kind of kind of be its own island, right? So you can set up this planning project and you can use this planning project as a project, right? Time entry can go against this. I have assignments for my people, which will show up on their Creative Today page, which I promised to show you. Um, you know, so again, it can be its very own project. So you could say, I'm only gonna bill this planning project, right? And my options for billing will be fixed fee or time and materials, right? So if I do fixed fee, um, I'm going to bill based off of that estimate that I created, and I'm able to generate a billing schedule. So if I do, you know, if I don't want that thirty-four thousand twenty-five dollars to show up um, each and every time I bill, because again, long-term project, I might not want to, um, you know, have it show thirty-four thousand twenty-five dollars to build. I can create a billing schedule, and I can say, well, yeah, I'm going to bill, you know, um, we'll just say twenty-five percent. And I'm going to bill that, you know, now, and then I can say, I'm going to do that in January, February, and March, right? So then I can, I can create this billing schedule. So when I do my fixed fee billing, of course, that's what's going to show up for my, you know, the amount to bill each and every month for the four months that I've set that up. 
And so typical fixed fee billing method. I do also have the ability, again, if people are putting their time and expenses against my planning project, to set it up to bill time and expenses. There's no trick to that when it comes to the billing, um, right? It bills just like any other project would bill time and expenses. But of course, we haven't demonstrated this yet, but we do also have the ability to link projects to this planning project, right? So I might be sitting there saying, well, the planning project was specifically just for planning. I was making a plan. I was doing, you know, I, I planned on my account manager this many hours a, a week and this my PR this many hours a week and things like that. But I'm actually going to build projects with the actual work to be done and link them to this planning project. So then you would select the option to build the plan and project separately, right? So then if I select that option right there, you know, again, if I, I might have some billing on the planning project, maybe some work will be being done on that or maybe i'm billing the estimate but maybe i'm going to be billing some actuals on the um, other projects separately so again you would have the bill the plan and project um, separately so then you would be when we link projects we will you would be billing those projects separately from the planning project now can they all show up on one invoice of course they can because you can use your um, mass billing or billing worksheets and you can say you know one invoice per client one line per project and you know and have the planning project and the link projects all on one invoice but again the amount to bill will be coming from the linked projects and not solely from the planning project okay so um this that's again the setup we have our get rate from you know and our item set up right there and so i'm gonna stop let's see if i have any questions i have a q um Somebody's asking if there's any reports that can easily show how many hours are used per month in a planning project. Um, yeah, so the, the answer is yes. Um, I, just any one of our projects, remember that the planning project is going to handle time entry and you know um, allocations and things like that, just like another project. So we do have, if we're looking at solely at time entry, um, you know, of course, our time detail data sets, if we're looking at how many allocated hours we have and things like that, we do have an allocated hours data set, ones that set up for weekly buckets like we have here in our planning project. So we do have reporting that will um, cover this information based on what we're looking at. So there will be reports. We do not have one specific report for the planning project, right? You know, like this is the planning project report because all of our reports will pull information from the planning project, um, all of our project man management reports and things like that. Okay, so that's my project settings. Again, same, some of the same, a little bit different, right? And then of course, like my team is going to be here built based on who I'm who I'm, you know, assigning at the schedule level. And of course I can add other people to the team. So no, no real change there at the planning project. And then of course I can change my project status to active. And then it shows up here on my planning project dashboard, right? I got, I have my planning project dashboard here, but where else it's going to show in, in work -a -jig, of course, is if I went into my um, creative today page, right? Here's my creative today page. Now, what I typically tell people with the planning project is it really looks and it, you know, it, it really helps a lot better. If you show this information in our creative today page, we have our task card view. It shows there, right? And our list view, of course it's there. And then we have a tile view. What makes the tile view valuable for the planning project is it also shows this information in the weekly bucket format. Right, like so in our task card view, if I were to look at this, it's not a problem, but it, you know, um, it will just, you know, again, kind of show like my my entire I, I, item here, where in this one, of course, it's going to show me like, you know, again, just kind of my week view. I guess we'd actually modified it now that I'm looking at it. It's telling me what I have remaining this week and what I haven't worked this week. So I think we fixed that for the planning project finally. Um, but you can again look at this and you would see, you know, that I have this assignment to me again, as long as you're assigning those, you know, allocations to people in the planning project schedule um, and not just the service, it shows up here. And of course, I can put time against it. One of the big differences of doing time entry to a planning project is I do not have the ability to mark the assignment as complete, right? This is an ongoing assignment. I do not have the ability to say mark it as done, right? But I certainly can come in here and I can do my time entry, right? And I can, you know, say I did my hour. 
just like I can on a regular everyday project. I just cannot mark it as done. It will be ongoing. Another area, of course, that you know we wanted to show is under my resource manager, my staff schedule. This is again where I'm able to forecast my commitments that I've made. All of this information that you're seeing on here, I this is a pretty clean system right here. This is all coming from my planning project, right? So these are my allocations per day, or even better, if I want to look at it, I can look at it per week, right? So here's my 4.8 hours and my eight hours next week and my 5.72 and my 11.19. Again, that you know goes right back into the schedule of my planning project. It's going to match there. And I'm able to see again that I have this web content development down here unassigned at this point in time, but I can see the commitment that I've made there. And I can drill down into it, right? And I'm able to see this information um, in these views, okay? So again, this is the, the purpose of the planning project. Again, is I can start building those resource commitments for my client. And I can then also, you know, again, build an estimated amount for that resource commitment that I'm making. But I can also use the planning project as my, you know, my creative tool. Hey, I, you are assigned to the, this, you know, work. I need you to do this many hours of account management this week or PR this week and ongoing um, for that, you know, um, for the life of this project right here. Okay, so I'm going to pause right there. If you guys have any questions, I see a question in the chat, so I'm just going to take a look. Um, Okay, somebody's just asking how to get to the reports. That's going to be, again, we don't have one specific report for the planning project, but the reporting, so this would be one, you know, based on one report, but the reports that we're talking about are going to be in the Everyone Report Center. And most likely you're going to have the most success creating a custom report using like we have under, just let me get there. We have this one, um, we have allocated hours and uh, actually the task assignment weekly data is going to probably be one of your, your better bets because again, the planning project, we're doing this in a weekly time frame, And so this task assignment weekly data will give you that information in those weekly buckets. And then of course we have the time detail data, right? Which is just gonna say, this is how many hours we've actually spent on here right and you can again do this information in a daily weekly monthly by client by project and things like that we have added in a bunch of our reports where you can kind of do planning project equals yes right so you can um you can pinpoint just the information coming from planning projects versus regular projects so we have added some of those um fields to there what some other people are doing is they might be creating a project type or a project status specifically, you know, for the planning project. So again, that would separate it from the other projects when they're looking at that information. But this is basically where you would start building those reports for the planning project. Okay. Um, now, a couple other things about the planning project that we, you, you know, want to look at before we get to, to linked projects, because we will get to that, I promise you here, is that, you know, again, we're, we're building out this timeline. It's kind of long term, let's just say, and, and, you know, you might have somebody who gets to go on vacation or would be out. You certainly can come into the schedule and you'll see that you, when you click on the, that assignment that you have a little pencil. And this pencil is going to allow you to do a handoff, but it's actually a little bit different than some of the other handoffs that we have in WorkMajig because it's going to allow me to reassign, um, you know, this assignment and I can say to, let's just say, you know, Daffy Duck, I'm not reassigning the entire thing. Really, I just need to reassign this one week. Right, and I don't need to reassign the whole 11.19 hours. I just really need to reassign, you know, or I'm just going to do five. I'm going to hand off five of those hours. So I can do that and I can hit save. What it does is, of course, is it adds Daffy Duck to my schedule here for account management. And if I scroll over, you'll see at that time period that I selected that now Daffy Duck is allocated those five hours and Yosemite Sam has been reduced to 6.19. So you can hand off multiple weeks, you can hand off, you know, the different number of hours. But again, that allows you to, to control that if they're going to be out or if you need to, you know, move some things around, you can certainly do that handoff. 
right there. But you'll notice again, it reacts a little bit different than other, you know, reassigns and things like that, because we can't remove Yosemite Sam unless we were reassigning everything from here because the other weekly assignments that they have. So that's again, you, you know, um, what that pencil icon does right there. And so again, like we said, we covered schedule estimate, project settings, we have our team, we activated it. So it's, you know, looking at we're now being able to see it in my creative today, you saw that I was able to put time against it, right? So if I could look at my time and my transactions, if I needed to do that, again, I have all the abilities that I have in a regular project, but I have one extra thing right down here. I have linked projects. Right. So again, right, like I said, we're, you know, we're resource planning. We have all this, we have a we have a plan in place. Right. But now, you know, when I say, well, I need you to do these 11.919 hours of account management a week, but now I have a specific task or work that needs to be done. Right. Like maybe we're building something for this client. Maybe we're doing again, you know, a specific workload. So I can come into this linked projects and I can come up to more. And I can either link an existing project, maybe I have a project already for this client where we're doing some work and we're going to use some of the allocations that I have in my planning project. Or again, now I just need to, again, I need to specify the work that needs to be done. So I can click in here and I'm gonna select this template. We're gonna do some PR work here. And it's going to create a linked project. So this should look very familiar to most of you. It's a project. It's a regular everyday project. It has a schedule. And in that schedule, I have work, right? You know, a, a set tasks of work that need to be done. This is how I'm going to be using some of that allocation that is on my planning project, right? So again, you know, I can go through, I can look at my project settings. I can set up my team of people. Right, so maybe on my team of people, you know, I have my Daffy Duck and my Yosemite Sam, and I can, you know, again, I can add my other people. I have a theme going. I don't know if you guys recognize that, but I have a theme on here, um, and I can assign these users again to those tasks, or I can leave those tasks unassigned at this time. But again, I'm just gonna, you know, auto assign and push them to my schedule. Okay. Um, and I'm going to activate my project. So this one again is going to be a live active project, but I just wanted to show you now I have people assigned. I got Yosemite Sam is doing account management on this, um, you know, PR, the press release development and Foghorn Leghorn is doing public relations again on this, um, you know, press release development task, right? So we have kind of this task going forward on here. Now, you know, again, so you would manage this project like you would a regular everyday project. You can manage it, work is being done. But what it's doing is when you do that, it is affecting my, um, my, my planning project here is that I would be able to see, again, that I, I have here my Yosemite Sam, right, I'll, this first week, I can see that from other projects, I have these two hours, right? So that linked project is using my hours that were on my planning project. So you can see again, originally I had six point, well, I'll use this week, 11.19 hours. I've used two hours from the allocation from my other project, right? So truly now on my um, planning project, I now only have 9.19 hours left in that week to be, you know, to be used, right? Again, for time entry against the planning project, for other linked projects to be using those, those things. So again, the, the linked project is interacting with the schedule here so that the person doesn't get over allocated um, for that time if you're trying to limit that. Now, can you create projects not linked to this one and use those hours independently? Of course you can. You can also link a project to a planning project and overuse those. I could have allocated 15 hours to them for that week from the, the linked project. But again, what it will do is it'll just reduce and, and say, well, now you don't have anything left on the, the planning project. And this is the number of hours that you'll be working on this project. But I also wanted to show you what that would look like on your, I guess I can go back here, on your creative today, right, is now I have this other work that needs to be done, right, you know, here, but it's going to show me, again, the work that I have based on, you know, the two different projects, right? So it's, again, it's not going to double ding me. I have the two hours here and I just have 3.72 hours remaining here. So again, it, it's doing the math and it's reducing that amount. So I'm not doing, 
more work than was actually allocated to me for those linked projects. All right. So I think we got through that pretty fast. I mean, that that's pretty much the planning project as a whole. I mean, the idea of that again is to, you know, to creating those commitments and creating, you know, that that future look, that forecasting of your, you know, resource management. So keep in mind again, you know, when we look at that planning project that when you're scheduling, you know, you have your options. You can assign just a service like I did here. You can assign a service and a person. You could just allocate a person too, if you wanted to. I generally recommend maybe also, you know, providing what service they, you know, they would be providing there. But you can, you know, you can again do a percentage assigned, a total number of hours for that time period, or you can manually bucket along the way, all the way through. Um, if you you know needed to do that and again like I said feeds into your resource management will feed into that creative today page and allow you to again see those those future commitments that you have so that I think is what I my planning project spiel any questions any concerns that I can answer through chat and if it's something that you want to get some more details with you want to kick around some ideas or something I definitely recommend you know um, emailing support at workamajig.com and asking the questions to your account manager maybe setting up a call and they can talk to you and, and discuss some of the things um, with that you know um, you know just some some people have some different ideas on how they want to use that so definitely talk to your account manager on that and um, somebody asked you can't assign people without a service you can um, my test site seems to um, I have I always have a default service set up for everyone so it's just going to stick a service in there but you probably can take one out if you wanted to let's just see <laughs> so yes um let me just see you know, I can I should be able to we'll see if it yells at me there you can <laughs> So you can you can just assign a, a person but again you know generally like i said that won't feed into your estimate so if you're going to assign just a person and allocate hours and then try to base an estimate off that you will need a service for that to work but um you can just assign a person and you can allocate them those hours absolutely we haven't restricted that um anybody else any other questions or concerns i'll leave the chat open for another um, couple of minutes if anything comes up and again please don't hesitate to email support at workamajig.com with any questions or concerns i know we went through this pretty fast so if there's anything else you want to discuss with your account manager please don't hesitate to do so and i guess i should say probably because we're this is a happy new year to everybody and um i like i said i'll leave this open for another couple minutes and then i'll let you guys go All right, guys. Happy New Year. It was nice talking to you. Bye.